Auto Tech, Advanced Manufacturing, CAD, Electronics, Engineering, and Metal Fab. Before we begin, I want to talk a little bit more about what we're going to talk about. So we'll be focused on curriculum, uh, credentials, credentials meaning um, licenses, degrees, certifications that you receive in your shop as a result of your performance, as well as cooperative education opportunities. Uh, cooperative education in many ways is the um, the hallmark of our school, it gives uh, students who are eligible an opportunity to uh, acquire a work placement in their junior or senior year. Uh, so you'll hear about cooperative education pl placements, and then you'll hear about different careers that are uh, available to you when you graduate from Girdle Lowell Technical High School. So at this time, I'd like to welcome Mr. Rich Soro, who will tell us a little bit about the auto collision pathway. Mr. Soro. I don't know if I can be, am I being seen? No. Well, hello guys. Um, we have a fantastic uh, auto collision. Can you hear me, mister? I think Mr. Soro just has to unmute. Hello? There you go. Mr. Soro, are you there? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you Good. wonderfully. Thank, Thank you. you. So um, here, here at uh, Greater Lowell Tech, we have a fantastic collision repair program. Um, very dynamic and lucrative industry. Um, if you have young people who are interested in automotive, uh, auto collision is a great way to go. We, we do a lot of work on vehicles. We spend a lot of time. We have um, um, credentialing that we can earn that is um, OSHA 10, which is an industry standard. We have a right to know certificate that we earn, which is environmental based through SB2. Uh, we have ICA, which is the leader in industry training. Even if uh, techs in the industry get trained, they go through ICA. So uh, we really can prepare um, your student. If they're interested in collision repair, uh, we can get them ready for a great career, uh, which is both highly in demand and lucrative for them. Um, Mr. Soro, can I ask you, can you tell us a little bit about the different projects that you do in auto collision? Well, depending on what grade they're in, with the sophomores, we start them with, with, with some special repair projects. We have some newer vehicles in here. We actually have three uh, Buick Encores that we can take apart and reassemble. Um, we have a big um, project we do every year. We go into the car show in Boston. We do a pedal car. Um, the car show sends us a pedal car. We customize it. Uh, we take the students in to see some of the custom cars that were built and obviously in, in use of some of the skills that we teach here at the school. Um, the students also look forward to an airbrush class we have right around Christmas time. Uh, we have an airbrush class where every kid uh, in the program comes down and we uh, do a piece of artwork using an airbrush uh, right around Christmas time. And obviously uh, one of my favorite things is we do live work. We, we do uh, um, very special selective collision repair work uh, that's that's similar to what they would see when they're in industry. So we, we try to try to replicate what they're going to get after when they get in the industry and they get working. Um, so that's about it. But we cover everything. I mean, from color matching and tinting to spraying to uh, plastic repair, plastic welding, um, welding, um, both aluminum, steel. Um, we do silicone bronze welding. Um, <laughs> oh, I think I think Miss Davis wants to jump in and ask a question. Sure. I'm sorry. No, I didn't. I just want to get back on. Oh, well, she wanted me to do something technically. I, I think I can help her in a minute. Um, so, Mr. Soro, can I ask you one more question? Um, I think that that phrase OSHA is going to be coming up a lot tonight. Could you just mm -hmm. tell tell the people out there who might be unfamiliar with OSHA what what exactly that is? Well, an OSHA certification basically is a safety certification, which goes through all the um, liabilities and all the uh, compliance uh, with industry. Every industry has standards that they're supposed to follow um, and that they, they take responsibility for, such as PPE. Uh, employers have to provide it. They have to see to it that it's worn. Um, in our program, we have uh, respirators that we wear uh, that are all handled properly. They're fit tested. They're kept in a special container and everything is always evaluated. They're timed out. It's quite a thing, but you have to follow those regulations in industry um, to keep everyone safe. I mean, uh, OSHA reports, every accident gets reported to the National Safety 
in, in Washington, and OSHA uses that statistics to try to keep things safe. So, so the reasons these things were developed and these certificates were developed is to keep everyone safe. There, there are accidents uh, a lot during, in the country during the year and try to curtail that. Um, we teach safety quite a bit. Um, okay. And that's a, an excellent uh, certificate that stays with you. Um, the right to know law that we get in our program deals with chemicals. So we know what they are. A lot of people feel that collision repair is a very dirty industry. Well, uh, maybe 40, 50 years ago it was, but today it's, it's, it's getting more environmentally friendly every day. We're using it the school water base uh, versus solvent. So there are no VOCs or no contaminants going into the air. It's a much, much cleaner thing than it was say 30, 40 years ago. A body shop might be very polluting uh, to the environment, but nowadays that's not the case at all. Um, Great. Well, you know. thank you, Mr. Soro, for giving us an explanation of the auto collision pathway and OSHA. So we appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, we're going to move on to uh, the neighboring shop, which is auto technology. And I believe Mr. LeMay is going to be here to talk to us a little bit about auto technology and its curriculum. Mr. LeMay? Yes, I'm here, Mr. Barton. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you wonderfully. Great, thanks. I'm just going to take a couple of minutes. Uh, I'll go over basically what the expectation would be coming into the auto program, uh, which, by the way, is very vibrant right now. There's just so many jobs out there for the kids. Uh, we can't fill enough of the jobs that the employers are coming our way with. So very busy industry and uh, very needed for uh, technicians right now. So just a little overview. Uh, freshman year, kids would come in. Um, they work with Mr. Pecek. They would be introduced to the automotive industry. We definitely focus a lot on safety for the first year. Tools that they would need, how to use them. And they, they work in the shop with all the seniors uh, in the, when they're here during their time with the seniors themselves, uh, with the freshmen. So it's good that they have that interaction. Sophomore year, uh, the kids will come in, they work with Mr. Siggins, and they have uh, a lot of hands-on working in the shop that they have, and they work with multiple shop vehicles. They cover such topics as engines, engine rebuilding. They actually physically rebuild an engine, take it apart. They work with suspension and tires, and they learn about electrical systems. And then uh, junior year, uh, this is where things get uh, a little different. The kids actually start working in a live shop setting. Uh, we actually run a real automotive shop here where customers come in, the kids interact, and they actually, it's almost like going to a job every day. So we really pick up on the customer uh, service end of it and the employability skills. Uh, students, they work on car maintenance, state inspection process, tires, brakes, exhaust, uh, steering and suspension systems, minor engine repairs and diagnostics. And then by the end of term two, junior year, they're actually eligible to go out on co-op. And I'll talk about that in a quick second. Senior year, for the students that aren't on co-op, they continue to do the live customer repairs, uh, similar to junior year, but they do more challenging repairs and um, diagnostics and they hone their skills uh, as entry-level technicians. So that's just kind of a quick overview of what we do in the automotive uh, program Great. for curriculum. Mr. May, can you talk a little bit about uh, co-op opportunities, where students work and what kinds of things they do? Oh, sure, yeah. So uh, we have many uh, employers that we've uh, partnered with over the last few years, just to name a few in the local area, people are probably familiar with it. So we have many students right now employed at Toyota of Nashua, uh, McMulkin Chevrolet, Kier of Nashua, Landon Chevrolet. We deal with some independents, uh, Ryan's Automotive, Schlott Tire, also Rockingham Toyota uh, in Salem. So out throughout the Merrimack Valley, you know, not just in the Tingsboro Lowell area, but there's just, you know, automotive is everywhere. So uh, one other, industry we deal with was New England Transit Bus Company. So, you know, you think busing, it's, it's all about transportation. So there's a need there for students to learn about that as well. It's not just on cars. Great. Well, thank you, Mr. LeMay. We appreciate it. Okay. My, uh, just one quick thing, if I could, I <laughs> have just another minute. So uh, a couple of things right as far as credentials. Sure. Uh, ASC, which is Automotive Service Excellence, that is the uh, guiding uh, 
entity for the automotive industry. We work with the kids to get them uh, an intro to automotive certification once they leave the uh, senior year. Uh, OSHA 10 is also got as well, just like similar to what Mr. Saro said. Mm -hmm. uh, so they get their OSHA card. They do get SB2 training, safety and whatnot, but uh, we also are partnered with the Ford Motor Company as well, where we have access to getting training certificates, much like uh, any Ford technician would coming into a dealership. So we're able to get them certified as an entry level Ford technician as well. Um, so uh, with that, I don't wanna take any more time. I look forward to any questions that anyone may have um, and thank you for your time. No, thank you, Mr. Lemay. We appreciate it. I'm sure there'll be plenty of questions. I hope so. Um, moving to advanced manufacturing with Mr. Cornelia. So Mr. Cornelia, could you tell us for people who are unfamiliar with advanced manufacturing, what, what exactly is the world of advanced manufacturing? The world of advanced manufacturing, can you, can you hear me, Mr. Barton? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, the world of manufacturing is basically, well, actually the world of advanced manufacturing here at Greater Lowell is, um, we're basically, we're making parts, we're machining, we're showing the students how to set up machines, CNC. Uh, CNC stands for a computer, computer numerical control. So if you're curious about the world of manufacturing, Greater Lowell Technical High School Advanced Manufacturing Program may be the place for you. And a big part of what we do in our shop is help our students become curious and interested about manufacturing by presenting a different type and diversified parts and pieces. In other words, as you look at this picture right here, this is Mr. Carrigan and he's showing our students how to use the, um, the control panel for a CNC piece of equipment. It's, uh, and I believe as I look at that, that's a uh, CNC milling machine. The milling machine centers make parts. And as we go, you know, we're going to make parts. There's a lot of job opportunities, especially right here in the Merrimack Valley for a lot of our students. Um, <laughs> You know, and then what happens is because every shop, you know, think of it combined with our shop is combined with theory, classroom, it reinforces learned and applied according to state and industry standards, preparing them for a career in manufacturing. Students are given the opportunity to experience what it feels like to manufacture a pot from a raw material into a product of value. Students will learn CNC lathe, how to manufacture a part, they, um, from, you know, from exploratory Mr. Cornelia, students I... all the way up through seniors, they begin right here, very simple, very easy. And then we, we also use um, Mastercam software in the classroom to help our students develop. And then we, what, we start making easy things like freshman year, we make dog tags, or we might make the, um, the spinning top. And then I have the children, you know, calculate the sizes, the depths and angles. They learn how to use precision measuring tools. And then they'll be introduced into using the Haas control panel. The Haas control panel is Mr. what Mr. Can, can I jump in and ask you a question? One question. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I had one, one little question before um, you. Oh, can you hear me okay? Uh, some of the co-op, are you asking about the co-op? Sure. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little okay. bit about co-op um, opportunities? I just, I just lost you, Mike. Can you, can you tell us about co-op opportunities? Some of the things that we uh, want to talk about, uh, like for instance, our co-op, our co-op providers would be um, Wiesick Machine. Um, CNM over in Hudson hires a lot of our students. And because our students are ready for co-op, Did he freeze? Well, I think we had a little bit of technical difficulty with Mr. Cornelia. I can't hear um, you anymore. I lost, I lost the video. I mean, I lost the uh, the hearing part, and I can't hear you anymore, Mike Barton. Okay, so I just, um, I the internet think, connection is unstable. Sure, and we're I gonna. I just want to say that, and I'm just you. gonna finish this. My sophomores and juniors. Some of the area companies that our students have co-op positions are at Wiesick Machine, Strawman Manufacturing Company, and CNM Machine in Hudson. Because we, we are partnered with real, real world companies, our students are given the chance to participate in a company that will offer career opportunity and advancement. Having the ability to join a real world manufacturing company and becoming something greater than you thought is quite an accomplishment because you wanna be able to follow your career, 
progress into the next state, you know, the next part of the next level. And these companies are allowing that. And a lot of the times these companies become, um, the, the, you know, they might be looking for a quality control inspector, or they might be looking for a shop foreman or anything like that. And Mike, I, I just want you to put up your hand because I can't hear you, but you, I'm sure you can just shake your head if you can hear me, Mr. Barton. I, I can. Okay. And I just want to say in conclusion, um, there's room for advancement in a lot of companies like this. And I just want to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cornelia. I'm sure we'll have some questions about advanced manufacturing. Um, so we're going to shift over to CAD and Mr. Stack, I believe is here and he's going to tell us what CAD stands for and a little bit about the, the experience of being a CAD student at Greta Lowell Tech. So Mr. Stack. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Barton. So welcome, everyone. My name is Mr. Stack. I'm a CAD instructor, and most of you are probably scratching your head going, what's CAD? Well, CAD stands for Computer Aided Drafting and Design. In short, we design stuff with computers. Like everything that we see out there, this mouse, this speaker, this bottle, a spoon, heck, sneakers, everything now is designed with CAD. So if you take CAD, a lot of our students go on to careers in architecture, interior design. Uh, we have students in college studying industrial design, which is, uh, it is designing things like speakers and sneakers. Um, and we have a lot of students that go on to college in engineering fields. Uh, we have several students studying plastics engineering, mechanical engineering, biomedical engineering, civil engineering. And there's a new part that we're finding um, the software that we're using in CAD, like for architecture, we're also finding that software is now used in the gaming industry. So we actually have students who are now going on uh, into, into game design and CGI for movies. Um, in terms of co-op, a lot of our students end up doing co-op at local companies. Uh, one of the big ones is BAE Systems. It's a defense contractor uh, with multiple locations in the area. We have some students working at Granite State Glass Kingfisher Industries, Mammoth Fire Protection System, Somerset Industries, and several millwork and construction companies. In terms of curriculum and activities, uh, the CAD program follows the state drafting standards, which that doesn't mean much to you, but just to let you know, we try to teach in a way that's project-based. Um, so when we're teaching the software, we have to make a connect with you as a student. So, a lot of the times we design things that we actually end up building. So the shop has laser tables, 3D printers, CNC milling machines. We get a lot of cool stuff. Um, and some of the projects we have done is uh, the Wang School in Lowell, we've designed their theater sets and constructed them the past several years. Uh, Lowell Animal Control approached us and we gave them a mock-up of a potential new building that they wanted to do. The Tings Road Police Department had us create emergency evacuation plans uh, for them. And we also collaborate with other shops within the school. So the carpentry shop and painting and design put together a float each year for the City of Lights Parade in Lowell. We created the files that carpentry used to cut out all the shapes that they needed. Um, and we actually even worked with culinary, I know, right? So you'd figure how would those two connect? Well, they had a, a project where they had to design a restaurant. So they gave us the concept and our students created this digital restaurant with the pictures that the people could walk through uh, virtually. Um, and one of, our, one of our best new collaborations is with UMass Lowell. Uh, we have students that um, work with their Enable program. And Enable is, an, an orga is a campus organization that creates prosthetics for people all over the world. The problem was they were getting volunteers to design stuff, but they didn't really know the software. So what ended up happening was our students, the great old tech students, knew the software better than the college students. So our students are, um, are working and have the past few years helping create prosthetics. Um, in terms of credentials, um, like Mr. Saro said earlier, all of our students should be graduating with an OSHA 10 hour safety certification. And another one of the, um, one of the industry standard softwares that we use is SolidWorks. Um, and most students, if they choose to, can end up with a solid work certification. Uh, so, our students, a lot of us can go along to local colleges. We have students at UMass Lowell, Boston Architectural College, Wentworth. Uh, we just had a new cluster get accepted to UMass Lowell a few weeks ago. So we have students kind of covering a large spectrum. 
Um, and in terms of the pictures you see on the screen, you can see on the top. I'm going to ask, so I'm glad you, you glad you went there. All right. So on the top on the top left, uh, that's that's one of our students, and um, her parents own a race car company or a race car team. And what they found was the the wing on the top of the vehicle wasn't giving them the downforce that they wanted. So they brought the actual full size wing into the shop. And what we did was we measured it up, we mocked it up digitally, and in the software we have, we could do airflow analysis to, to redesign it and see if the design actually produces more downforce uh, before they actually manufacture it. So we've done that and that they didn't race this season, but hopefully next season we'll get that on the car. And in the bottom right, you'll see a lot of crazy students, they're in a cardboard boats in the pool. Uh, so what we do is a lot of times when you're out in industry, you're asked to design something you know nothing about. So this is a way to kind of sim simulate that where I have them design a boat out of cardboard. They don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about boats before this. So what we do is we have them design the boat. And, um, and part, of, part of what we try doing is we try doing as many hands-on things as possible. So kind of the grand finale is we have the Greater Lowell Tech Regatta where the students race these cardboard boats in a relay race in the pool. Um, I will say most of the boats do fail, but nobody gets hurt. But it's a, it's a good time and, they, and we learn a lot about design and how to improve things. Excellent. So it, it's a lot of fun and a lot of learning. So thank you, Mr. Pack. Appreciate it. Awesome, Jeff. All right. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to electronics with Miss Knight. So if Miss Knight's here, she can tell us a little bit about, uh, maybe we should start with the pictures that we're looking at. Miss Knight, are you there? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Great. Hi, good, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Grace Knight, and I'm the electronics teacher in, in um, Greater Low Technical, uh, Technical High. Um, so, yeah, so sh you want, um, should I start with the picture or should I give an introduction to our program first? Whatever you feel comfortable with. You can start okay. with an introduction, and if you want to talk about the pictures, that would be great, but yes, I don't want definitely. to. Yes, yeah. okay, definitely. Yeah. Okay, definitely. Where you want to go. Definitely, thank you. And so, um, well, electronics, I, I guess everybody's familiar with the term electronics because it's everywhere in our life nowadays. And uh, you, 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 I guess everybody has a cell phone and more than one or more than one computers. And uh, so you will have circuits in the, in the cell phone, in a computer, um, and also in your TV and, you know, like everywhere in your house. So, uh, of, of course, in, um, in your cars, when you, Jump in your car when you go out of your house. You jump in your car, and we'll have circuits in the cars as well. So, and so our program uh, starting from ninth graders, they come in and uh, they would um, get them familiar with the circuits. We used to have uh, wooden block circuits where they can solder and put components together, make the flashing light work. And also, we um, once they are done with that project, we help them to make a light detector so they can put the um, electronics components together and make the make uh, a lot of noise with the circuit and then <laughs> and so it makes a squeaky noise and which students really love and so um also they will learn a little a little bit about you know like um basic stuff like you know mostly hands-on stuff in ninth graders because with ninth graders because we just want them to have fun while they start getting familiar with circuits and then uh, when they're going to 10th grade they will, of course, they start with the, you know, OSHA safety um, training too. They will, by the time they finish their training, they will get the OSHA safety certification. So 10th grade is the, fund, uh, they learn all the fundamentals of uh, electronics. So they learn how to use the equipment and they will learn how to solder. And so in terms of solder, they will be getting a IPC, uh, uh, soldering certificate, which is uh, recognized by like on by the industry. So by getting that certificate, they're, they're almost ready for a job when they're in uh, when they go into 11th grade if they they keep their soldering skills uh, solid. And then also they will learn um, they also they will learn uh, electron electrical theory. You know like how the circuit works, different components like you know, resistor, capacitors, and uh, and how everything works together and inductors, how everything works together and how does um, 
that you know what is transistors nowadays you know we have like uh, millions and millions of transistors in every little circuit. They will learn how the transistors works. So we prepare them with all this fundamental knowledge. And so they can get higher uh, training once they're going to uh, junior and the senior years. So in junior years, we'll learn, um, we'll prepare them uh, for the electronics technician certification um, uh, exam. When the, you know, so at the end of the year, junior year, they will be taking the a certification exam so they could become a certified electronics technician and which means um, they can they're ready for uh, entry level jobs in this industry and also in so uh, in, in senior year we um, we they, they will take a Cisco IT, ITE um, course with us which is uh, Cisco IT essentials so they will learn Everything about PC hardware, software, how everything works, and then in also um, how to take apart a computer and then put together a computer. In fact, our com our students has been uh, putting together a gaming computer, like really like fancy uh, high level gaming computer in our shop. And then after that, they can enjoy you know, playing games on this computer that they build together. So I I'm gonna guess, Miss Knight, that that might be one of the highlights of their year putting together the gaming oh. computer oh yes definitely and so this course not only they learn about pcs they, we also um teach them about networks um setting up and so they can be you know they can um they can work for networking companies like you know uh netflix uh, i mean sorry the xfinity comcast those companies to set up networks and do troubleshooting with com uh, with uh customers for customers as well. They also learn about printers. So they learn a lot of different stuff which can get them, uh, you know, can get them certified with this uh, Cisco IT, uh, ITE certification. Once they get this uh, certification, they, they are ready for, you know, like uh, they are ready to be a computer like IT person or they can go into retail, help people to, you know, fix, uh, fix computers and um, fix computers and the printers, all kind of, you know, troubleshooting uh, uh, work. So and also the, um, I'm sorry. So uh, one night. last part is the, the picture, yeah. Yeah, one, one before we head off to um, the end world of engineering, can you maybe talk a little bit about the pictures, which I think are robotics and bot Yes, ball? yes, I was just about to go there. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the prompt. So, uh -huh. um, yes, then, so they also, the, um, they built um, uh, robots together with Mr. McNeil and then Mr. McNeil actually takes them to, um, all over the place for a robotic uh, competition. So that picture is um, when, you know, when they were um, using a robot to, you know, to, um, to do all kinds of jobs with the boss. And this, so in robots, there are uh, things called uh, stepper motor that controls controls in the robot to make them repeat or do different uh, movements to get the ball where they want to be. So um, that's um, one of the one one of the activities they will do in our shop. That's, that's and also, um, yeah. So yeah. can I talk about uh, co-op? Well, I think you could. Yep. If you can give us okay. a little bit of a brief description of co-op, because I think people are anxious to hear what what opportunities are available. Yes. Okay. Great. So, um, of course. So, in in our shop, not only they get the uh, three certification I just mentioned, they also students learn how to build traffic light, how to build power supply, FM radios. So, um, so in so we prepare them not only for the entry level jobs, also you know that we prepare them uh, for college further college education as well. So, um, it's, so in terms of uh, you know co op jobs. So my, our students will get co-ops, uh, will have opportunity to um, work at different companies starting from the second year, uh, second uh, half of 11th grade of this junior year to uh, senior year. So the companies that, you know, we have a very good um, connections with are, you know, a lot of like um, BAE system, all this like uh, companies, everybody knows Raytheon and Shanahan and the, uh, uh, Lockheed Martin and also HP and Dakota. You know we have uh, all these companies. You know they keep 
calling us for students. In fact, we have more jobs than students, and sometimes we have to ask other shops for students well, as well. So, well. Maybe next year after our presentation tonight, we'll have plenty of students in electronics. <laughs> Okay, so, thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Ms. Knight. Thanks. Um, thank you. Shifting over to engineering uh, is Mr. Powers. Hi, how are we doing? Good, how are you? Excellent so far, thanks for asking. So uh, my name is Joe Powers. I'm the engineering technology teacher for ninth grade and then 11th and 12th grade theory. Uh, we have two other instructors, Mr. Hodgkinson, who's our sophomore year instructor and Ms. Ewens who handles the shop in 11th and 12th grade. And um, as far as curriculum goes, the things that we're gonna be learning while you're in the engineering program, um, we focus on two big ones, mechanical and electrical. We also uh, go into architecture and civil engineering and uh, digital electronics, uh, computer integrated manufacturing, which uh, you heard a lot of talk about like CNC machines and stuff tonight. This would be like kind of like the integration of all that equipment and how to set it up so that it all flows throughout a manufacturing facility. Um, we have some uh, college classes or college credit classes that I'll talk a little bit in the certifications part, but um, their introduction to engineering design. So that beginning, like how do you solve a problem? How do you create something new? Um, they'll do that in their 11, uh, 10th grade year with Mr. Hodgkinson. Uh, we have principles of engineering, which they go through in kind of the end of the junior year and then through the senior year. And that's um, the math, the theory, uh, a lot of the, uh, kind of just like the core ideas of like what you need to be successful in it as an engineer. Mm -hmm. um, and then they do circle back in uh, senior year and they do um, a little bit of a capstone thing. So, um, you know, engineering is this huge umbrella of things. Saying you're an engineer is like saying you're a person, right? There's, there's all different types of people. There's all different types of engineers. So in your senior year, you go and um, you have the opportunity to kind of pick like, you, you know, your, your focus. So if you wanted to jump in and work on uh, robotics, then that could be like your, your kind of like main driving focus, right? Um, we also, uh, you know, halfway through the junior year after they've gotten their OSHA card, like they get in every other shop, we get uh, the OSHA 10 hour card too. They would go out and be eligible for co-op. Um, some of the co-ops we have are the Granite Group, uh, Kingfisher, RGC Millwork. They're all kind of like architectural civil kind of side. Um, we do have students at BAE as well. Um, uh, we have students have gone on to work at a company, Mark Forge, which makes 3D printers. Um, they were good enough to take some of our students. Um, so the co-ops are as varied as the curriculum, right? Like there's, there's an engineering type for everyone. Like I was in mechanical engineering, but um, Mr. Hodgkinson was in architecture civil and Ms. Ewens was in biomedical. So there's a, there's a, there's a healthy uh, amount of knowledge across all the disciplines, right? Um, a wide range. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. It's not, uh, you know, we want, we weren't all in the same industry. We only have like this little slice. It really kind of opens up and you can see a lot of the different areas and get kind of firsthand experience from people who did it for years, right? Um, in terms of career, like, uh, let's say you're at, you know, you're leaving graduation, you got your cap and gown on, what can you do, right? Well, you could go off and get a job right away as uh, an engineering technician, um, a production, manufacturing, um, technician, uh, those type of jobs, assembly, um, you know, uh, those are all options. You could go on and further your education, which, um, you know, a healthy percentage of our students do. You could do an associate's degree and go out kind of in like the junior engineer level. And, um, or you can go off and just hit the, hit the ground running and do the bachelor's and then just graduate and have the engineering degree, right? Um, so what's up? I don't want to interrupt you. Keep, keep going. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, so uh, we do, uh, in terms, I'm going to talk real quick about what we do to service the students who go on to college and what we do to service the students who want to go right to work. Because as a vocational school, we got to kind of cover both bases, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, first, we'll talk about the college one. Um, so right off the bat, you're going to be immersed in, uh, you know, concepts and uh, activities that are that are college level, but age appropriate, if that makes sense. So uh, we partner with a program, Project Lead the Way. And if you, I always wanna be clear that I say this because people hear the first part and then the second part gets lost, right? Uh, in the course of taking principles engineering, introduction to engineering design, computer integrated manufacturing, civil and architectural, all these courses, um, you take them as a student. At the end, if you pass a test, 
there is um, the ability to collect three, three college credits per course, right? So that gets you about 15 credits net if you pass all the exams, right? So that's a kind of a good leg up on, you know, you're going into, into college as a freshman, but you've already got most of a semester kind of chipped away, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's all through that Project Lead the Way course that um, we talk more about um, during exploratory and through the year, right? So um, those are kind of like the good fundamentals of a kid who's off onto college, right? What do we do about students who uh, want to go to work right away? Well, we do have um, a few certifications kind of happening now. We have more on the way. We're building that as we go. So obviously they get the OSHA 10, which is great. Uh, we partnered with um, two companies, Festo and Amatrol. And they're helping us to get our certifications kind of off the ground. We Right now we have an injection molding um, certification. Uh, we have over 25 pieces of industry level equipment in the shop. So wind tunnels, CNC machine, laser cutters, um, you know, wire bending machines, vacuum formers. And uh, we really like to get a healthy portion of the kids on those machines so that when they go out, whether it's right to work or after college, they're familiar with what the machines can do because not only as a technician, but um, if you're an engineer and you don't know what your company's capable of making, um, you're gonna have a hard time. So to be familiar with that equipment is really helpful no matter what you do, right? Um, Power, so, thank you. No problem. Oh, no, I do have a few, few last few second thing. Uh, I just wanted to go with uh, some of the colleges that our students have gone on to visit or attend. UMass Old, WPI, Middlesex Community College, Northern Essex, NYU, University of Arizona, Wentworth, um, you know, all great schools and they're all out there doing well. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for the overview of the engineering program and all that you folks do for our students. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Um, before we move to our last department for transportation, which is metal fabrication, I wanna open the chat up so we can make sure we, we get our audience gets started on asking questions. So feel free to, the chat will open and then you can chat your questions and we can answer them. But before we do that, let's hear from Metal Fabrication from Mr. Tyne, our brand new instructor, Mr. Tyne, and a graduate of Great Little Tech. Yep, exactly. Brand new instructor, <laughs> yeah. Former graduate of Great Little Tech 2003. I came from this Metal Fabrication program so I know what it's like to be on the other side of the desk right so a little bit about our curriculum first and foremost safety in shop you'll learn how to safety use all of our equipment the first when you walk in the shop it's probably a little bit intimidating with all the big large machinery there but no worries there's three of us in there to help you out uh, some of that machinery is Miller welders AccuPress press brakes rollers punches oxyacetylene flame torches and our brand new CNC plasma machine, which I've been having a lot of fun with and I can't wait to get you guys in there to play with it too. So uh, in shop, you'll be uh, doing a lot of welding practice, fabrication, and uh, make a lot of cool projects while doing so. As you can see right there on your, on your screen, there's a bench you know th that was made for uh, the armed, force, armed forces bench. And then you see the grandfather clock right there which was taken to the National Skills USA competition. Um, so while you're practicing, you're making cool projects like that. In the classroom, which is where I'll teach, I have the freshmen and the juniors and seniors in theory, you'll learn the science and mathematics of the welding trade and sheet metal, uh, including, but not limited to, uh, blueprint reading, trade related math, metallurgy, which is the study of physical and chemical behaviors of metallic elements, Uh oh, I think um, Mr. Powers is. No, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Tyne is is frozen at this time, um, but I think everyone else can hear me. We collaborate together. Back. There. Excellent. Am we, I back? We lost you there for a minute, Mr. Tyne, but you're back in action. Okay. So. Sorry about that. I was saying uh, the shop and the classroom collaborate together. So if you're doing something like MIG welding, I'll. I'll focus on MIG welding in the shop, um, in, in the classroom as well. So you learn the sciences behind it all and put it all together. Um, 
some projects you see there is the memorial benches. Uh, freshman year, we typically make metal roses, which if you have any siblings that are in the school, they probably brought them home, gave them to mom or dad or someone. Um, also, if you've ever been to the Songus Arena, uh, right in the lobby, there's a river hawk, metal river hawk there that was made by the students at Great Little Tech. Um, some fire pits, uh, always evolving and developing new projects in our shop. Uh, so some credentials that you'll get here is, I know you've heard a lot about OSHA 10. Um, that is an additional credential that we get in our shop as well before you can go out on co-op. Um, the SP2, which is safety and pollution prevention. I'm running that through with the students now uh, daily. Um, some preparation for the D1 structural welding test will be uh, taught to you in the shop with uh, Mr. Pear and Mr. Kazalowski. And then um, NFPA hot work certificate, uh, which is hot work permitting procedure and uh, fire prevention. Um, so co-op, el 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 eligible students can go out on co-op, you know, at the end of junior year, which I did. Um, so you go out every other year, you can go out on, on your shop week and you, you, you're essentially, you're getting paid to learn on the job, which is why not learn and cash a check at the end of the week, right? So some companies uh, in the co-op program, uh, Mass Crane and Hoist, uh, Welch Welding, Tuxbury Welding, Lowell Iron and Steel, l, l Sheet Metal, Rapid Sheet Metal, and Precise Industries. Um, so more than just welding, you can do sheet metal, which where I came from, did a lot of uh, sheet metal duct work and things of that nature, and with welding combined with the two. So the other two instructors were iron workers. So they, they know a lot more about that stuff. I know a lot more about the sheet metal at the end of things. So we all come together as one. Uh, some career opportunities, uh, you can go in the construction field and be an iron worker, sheet metal, inspector, educator, sales, project management. Um, and many, many companies will actually pay you for continued education through the apprenticeships after high school. Uh, once I graduated, I went out and I worked for a sheet metal company and they paid for me to go to school until I can get my sheet metal license. So th that's another thing to think about. Uh, some students go on to join unions such as Local 7 Iron Workers, uh, Local 17, the sheet metal workers, and uh, 537, which is the pipe fitters uh, because you need pipe welders, right? So all, all of those three unions have premier apprenticeship programs. Uh, one more thing I'd like to touch base on is just the average age of a welder right now is 55 years old. So by the year 2024, the United States will have a shortage of projected 400,000 welders. So that's job security, right? So um, that's all I have for the metal fabrication. Uh, if anybody has any questions. All right, thanks, Mr. Tyne. We'll, um, we'll definitely relay them to you as we get, we get questions being chatted in here. Um, I guess we have two questions about, or a question about our automobile facility, auto technology facility. So either Mr. LeMay or Mr. Cornelia can, uh, Mr. Artie Cornelia can answer this. What kind of repairs do you do in the auto collision shop? Um, why don't we start there? Mr. LeMay or Mr. Cornelia? All right, here we go. I just happen to be unmuted. Oh, oh, terrific. Tell us about the different repairs that you do in the auto shop. And then there's a question about do we sell any vehicles that we repair? So maybe you could. Well, at the, at the entry level, at the sophomore level, when we have students come in at grade 10, we do a lot of projects that are use, we use donated vehicles. Uh, those donated vehicles are used for educational purposes through the uh, automotive program. Uh, we have four different instructors that are involved with that. And once they, the donated vehicles are used, we use them to the point where um, they're gonna be shifted over into auto collision where they're gonna be used there as well. So we completely use the vehicles once they're donated. We do not um, get them to the point where we would resell them. 
Um, once they're donated to the school, it's just we hold on to the titles and with, they're not allowed to go back on the road. But once we the students go from the sophomore level, they go into the junior level where they begin to work on customers' vehicles and they do a variety of different repairs, whether it's steering, suspension, brakes, tune-ups, exhaust work, common work that we do out in the industry for the community. And then we move right into the senior year where Mr. LeMay was explaining earlier that you know, the students have this, this type of work, they can do one of two things. They can continue in the shop or they can go out on co-op with a lot of our local opportunities from Southern Nashua all the way out towards Haverhill, all the way over towards Acton and Groton. So a lot of opportunities are available. Great, all right, thank you, Mr. Cornelia. We have another question about uh, electronics. Uh, two questions actually. The first question is, are there jobs fixing personal computers? Um, Miss Knight might be able to answer that. Okay. Oh, I was able to unmute myself. Okay. Uh, yes, we actually have um, students who graduate from our uh, department and end up taking taking IT job in our school. So um, he took the IT course and he learned how to. How to fix computers? How to you know assemble and uh, fix computers? And he's working. And he ended up working for our school IT department. Okay, great. And the next question is: um, in the electronics industry, IPC certification was mentioned. Which standards or standards standard um, is that IP certification in? Um, the. IPC Sarin is um, electronics industry standard. Okay, IPC 610, it looks like. And IPC J standard. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, IP, mm -hmm. thank you. All right, thank you. Um, we have a question about admissions, and it talks about attendance uh, and number of absences associated with attendance. Maybe Ms. Uh, Martinez can just give, give us a little bit of an overview of. Uh, admissions in relationship to attendance. Hi, this is, this is uh, Ms. Martinez uh, in admissions and uh, the question uh, regarding attendance yeah, again? The attendance requirements for admissions. Sure, uh, we'll be going over that later on in the program, but there is a rubric up on our website um, that will uh, uh, give you the, the attendance breakdown for, uh, for admissions. And it's a combination of uh, attendance, academic achievement, as well as uh, discipline and a guidance counselor recommendation from the, from the seventh grade as well as the eighth grade. And uh, that, that counts as about a third of, uh, attendance counts for a third of that, um, the point total. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, the next question I have here pertains to uh, medical. So someone's asking, uh, have we covered medical yet? Uh, the answer is no, medical is gonna come up after 7 p.m. So we have a few more minutes for some questions if anyone has some. Um, but I, uh, oh, I think we have another question. Uh, oh, no, it's about donated cars in the shop um, and that we're not allowed to sell any vehicles that are donated. Um, Was there a, another question about timeline for admissions? Yeah, about when they would know if they did get into the school. Yep, Ms. Martinez. Sure, the question is, what, what is oh, the time? You're muted. I'll, I'll... Uh, the question is, when is the timeline of when you would know if you were accepted to Greater Lowell for the upcoming school year? And uh, that would be the first week in March. Great. Um, this question about chatting. We're actually just taking questions by chat tonight. So um, if you have a question, you can chat and we can try to answer it for you. Uh, we have a few more minutes before we transition into personal services. Uh, do question, do we get email? Yes, you do. You'll get an email account. If the question is, will you get an email account as a student? The, I believe the answer is yes, you will get an email account as a student and we encourage you to use it. Um, how do we sign up for admissions or going to school? How do you apply to the school? Okay. 
and Ms. Martinez has just, just been unmuted. And how do you know if you get in? Okay. So, okay. So to apply for the school, you just go on our website at gltech.org and go to our admissions page. And there's an online application for admissions and you can just apply online. And uh, the second question. How would you know if you get in? Sure, you will be receiving an email as well as um, regular postal service mail um, that will uh, inform you whether you've been accepted or waitlisted um, in during uh, the first week of March. Sure. Um, there's one more question about exploratories next year if we're still remote or hybrid. I'm going to venture out and say that I think it's everyone's hope that by September we'll be back in school and things will be, will be back to normal and everyone will have uh, a wonderful school year for the 2021-22 school year. There's another question about shop and co-op. And then there's one more question about shop and co-op. Um, so what's the difference? Well, cooperative education is the opportunity when you're in your middle part of your junior year and your senior year to go out and get a paid working experience at a employer. So if you're eligible for co-op based on your grades and a few other factors, you'll be given the opportunity to have the privilege of going out to work in a company during your shop week, um, during your junior year and during your senior year. Again, that's a privilege. Again, there's requirements for going out on co-op. But again, uh, you heard the teachers today talk about um, opportunities to work at BAE, Raytheon, um, all of the different automobile um, operations in the Merrimack Valley in New Hampshire area. So again, that's the co-op experience and the shop experience is really the heart of the school. Uh, that's when um, between your sophomore, junior and senior year, you spend one week uh, in your academic classes and then virtually, one, well, not virtually, but entirely one week in your shop experience where you spend predominantly the whole week in the shop experience working on projects, learning from your teachers, working collaboratively with your students. So that's the that's really the difference between co-op, which is outside paid, and shop, which is inside the building. Um, do we have a gymnastics team? We do not have a gymnastics team. We're going to be doing a separate sports presentation on Thursday evening. Uh, we do have football, we do have basketball, um, and I think that's it for the sports questions. Ms. Martinez, grade requirements for admissions, field hockey. Possibly, we're looking at field hockey as perhaps an add-on in the near future. Oh, I can do that. I think we're just we're trying to get Miss Martinez unmuted here. Uh, and we do have wrestling. So uh, pre, pre, prior to the pandemic, we were looking at and had established um, the opportunity to have an Air Force ROTC program here. Um, the pandemic, um, in many ways prevented that as well as, um, but we're in the process of um, resurrecting that and acquiring a teacher to fulfill that ROTC program. But if we do have one, it will be uh, Air Force Junior ROTC. Right, it'll be Air Force Junior ROTC and we're looking at uh, acquiring instructors in order to provide that. Um, and we have about three minutes left for questions before we transition over to the, um, technical uh, to the technology cluster. Sure, they, there was a, a question about the criteria used for determining one's acceptance. Again, um, if you go on our website uh, under the admissions uh, menu, you will see that there is a, an admission scoring rubric there. That is the criteria that we use for each application that, that comes into um, Greater Lowell, uh, for, for Greater Lowell Technical High School. There's another question, Lisa, about transcripts from the middle school sent over. Whose responsibility is 
to do that. Sure, the, the sending schools will send over your transcripts uh, to us. We, we, we request them once you apply to the school um, after uh, the first two terms of, of this this year. Um, one question about exploratory, maybe you can answer that while you're unmuted, Ms. Martinez, the number of exploratories in a typical school year that people need to, can try out. Sure, uh, the, the typical number is 18 of our 23 technical programs you will be able to um, explore. Currently, we are doing 14 for this year, um, but um, it's a, usually anywhere between 14 and 18 programs. So we have one more question about what exactly is exploratory. Before we, we're going to shut the chat down in a few minutes so we can get started with the technology cluster, but um, maybe Ms. Martinez, you can just give us the snapshot of the exploratory program. Sure, the exploratory program. So every ninth grade student, um, once they're accepted to a local technical high school, um, the, the first um, two weeks of the school year, you will be in a pre-exploratory program where you will um, sort of get an overview of each program uh, that we offer, each technical program that we offer here at Greater Long. And then um, if you are accepted, once you register, you will choose uh, between 14 and 18 technical programs to explore throughout your ninth grade. And um, you will rotate through those programs. And once you rotate through those programs, and um, then you will um, choose your first, second, or third uh, choices um, of which programs you would like to uh, major in in the, the rest of your time here at Great Will uh, Technical High School. Great. And the last question before we shift to the technology cluster is typically how many freshmen get accepted? Sure, that changes uh, again for summer from year to year, but we usually accept um, over 550 students each year to Great Little Technical High School. We try, we try to accept as many as possible. Great. Thank you. So at this point in our program this evening, we're going to, sh we're, I want to thank the transportation manufacturing cluster for giving us an overview of their presentations. Thank, thank you, you for all the teachers that joined us. Um, and thank you, Mr. Cornelia for helping organize this. Um, we're going to shift over to the technology cluster. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with um, what the technology cluster comprises, that cluster includes um, members of the design and visual department, the graphics department, health department, medical department, and programming and web department, as well as digital literacy. Um, I think one of the questions that's probably going to come up is what are the differences between health and medical and design and visual and graphics? So we'll have to ask our guests to, to explain that. But um, we have from between 7 and 7.30 for them to give an overview. And then just as we just did, we're going to have an opportunity to uh, ask questions via chat and learn a little bit more about the admissions process. So uh, without further uh, ado, I want to introduce Mr. Lord from the design and visual department. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about design and visual. Mr. Lord. Yes, thank you, Mr. Barton. And good evening. Uh, my name is Nathan Lord. I'm the teacher or the, the shop teacher. Of um, Mr. Lord, you're muted. So there you go. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mr. Lord. Uh, I teach the, uh, the junior and senior shop at uh, Greater Lowell. I also teach the, um, the AP art program. Um, so the design and visual communication shop is is where students kind of come if they're interested in furthering their um, their their creative their creativity their uh, their art skills if they're looking for jobs that are related to art um, or creative fields so things like photography uh, videography animation graphic design uh, if you're interested in being a freelance artist or a freelance designer uh, cameraman uh, video production. So the list kind of goes on and on there and, and we'll maybe come back to uh, see some of those things uh, as I kind of talk about uh, each of the, the shop areas. So I'll try to go through each shop level. So as an exploratory student, you're going to kind of come in and uh, receive a lot of uh, introductory things around uh, concept development and uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud applications which is the industry standard for um, a lot of creative jobs. If you're dealing with media and creative uh, art 
your chances are you're going to be using the Adobe Creative Cloud. So we have the uh, the newest uh, versions of that. We run Macintosh computers or PC computers at the school um, at some point during your your high school career here. Um, and as a freshman, you're also exploring, you know, opportunities in those job fields. So you talk about some of those creative jobs. Uh, several, you know, projects that you might be working on as a freshman, although the, the time is limited there, uh, could be a tattoo illustration or manipulating photography using Photoshop. Uh, moving on to grade 10, you're going to build upon the fundamentals of uh, art and design. You're going to look into things like the elements and principles of design, color theory, uh, and then explore more of the tools of the industry. You're going to further your knowledge in the Adobe Creative applications. Uh, you spend a lot of time in Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. Um, you partake in group projects, presentations, critiques. Uh, you explore other, you know, areas of art and design like typography, layout design, mixed media, photography, um, and then you get used to presenting your your artwork. So things like the critique process. Um, moving on to grade eleven, you're going to kind of use some of those skills that you learned in grade ten to. Uh, start developing a portfolio. So there's a, a larger emphasis on creating your body of work um, through a portfolio. So you're collecting all of your, your best images that you're making. Uh, you have a chance to build a website using uh, Dreamweaver. You also uh, have the opportunity to learn more about safety in the shop as well as uh, attain your OSHA 10 certification. Mr. Lord, can I jump in and ask you about some of the art competitions and art yeah. shows that students have been, been involved in over the years? Yeah, so there's a lot of community uh, art shows that we've participated in. There's a biannual show uh, that that kind of revolves around the, the Lowell area schools. There's actually two now. Uh, one's called Visual Voices, which some students may or may not have participated in because it branches down to the, uh, the middle school. Um, so that's one of them. Uh, they have the opportunity to show their artwork at the Whistler House, and that's every other year they run that show. Um, there's also the, the Cool Science Art Competition, which also branches out to local uh, communities, and our shop has participated in that. Um, there's the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards, which is nationwide, so you have the opportunity to, you know, in a non- um, pandemic situation, you have the opportunity to travel to Boston or New York or um, uh, you know, and take it further even. Uh, there's the Congressional Art Competition, uh, which runs through the uh, through Washington, essentially, but also locally. So you have the opportunity to show your work locally. And if you, you know, go on to further your, uh, uh, your winning, you, you go on to Washington, D.C. So there's opportunities to, to definitely uh, exhibit your artwork if you're interested in art and design. Great. Can you, um, before before we shift on, can you talk about the colleges and maybe careers that kids go, uh, sure. students venture out into? Yeah, we try to get, uh, we try to get several art schools um, that offer art and design programs uh, in the area to come visit us. And they do a good job uh, highlighting some of the the programs that they offer. So if you're interested in animation or if you're interested in videography or design or the fine arts, um, all those schools, uh, and just to name a few, like MassArt, uh, Maine College of Art, um, Leslie University, those are some we met with this year that, that just um, you know do a great job with those design and art programs. So the you know the creative jobs out there are, are kind of ever changing, but uh, you know there's a lot of opportunities you know that start at Greater Lowell because we do offer a lot of the technology that a lot of the colleges are using and industry professionals are using too. Um, so as a student at Greater Lowell, you have you have your hands on a lot of the industry standard uh, technology. Before, before we shift to graphics, Mr. Lord, maybe you could just tell us, many students sometimes get design and visual uh, mixed up with graphics. Could you tell us maybe in you know, the 30 second 
sure. I can answer what, what the main difference is. I would say in a nutshell, uh, design and visual is more about um, starting with a, a concept and turning your idea or your concept into uh, a visual piece of art or a design or a graphic. So if you had an idea for a t-shirt uh, in design and visual, we would uh, in essence make the art that would go on a t-shirt. Not to say that graphics doesn't also do that, but um, uh, if you're thinking in terms of printing, a lot of the pre-press stuff may be that of a uh, design and visual uh, student. Great, and that's what those kids are, uh, well, people are doing in that picture that we're looking at. Yeah, so in the picture, yeah, you're seeing um, you're seeing a, a portfolio review. So that's actually a college representative reviewing a student's uh, portfolio. Okay, great. Yep. Well, thank you, Mr. Lord. We appreciate well, the review of design and visual. My pleasure. Stay with us because there, I'm sure there'll be some questions. Absolutely. Uh, shifting over to graphics, we have Mr. Dion. Mr. Dion here to answer a few questions about graphical communications. So, um, <clears throat> graphic communications um, for the freshman, and I, I teach the freshman exploratory and the junior and senior uh, theory classes. Uh, great alone. Um, <clears throat> it's my eighth year there, and uh, I'm an alumni of the school. So what we focus on in the freshman exploratory is, um, I'll kind of go off of what Nate said, um, we focus uh, on the print and manufacturing side of the house. We do also um, teach the kids um, InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop in freshman year. We give them the basic tools to kind of give them an understanding because they're making t-shirts, they're making notepads, they're making notebooks, so they actually do their own design work in the exploratory and then we send them off to the shop and they do the manufacturing part. So that's probably the biggest difference because we do do design work, but we do the manufacturing portion um, of that. So after they take the shop, uh, we kind of give them a little more of those uh, Adobe products. And then when they hit sophomore year, they kind of dive into those products, uh, focusing on Illustrator, Photoshop and InDesign, which is the three main uh, programs that are used in the graphic arts industry. Um, and as they kind of go through the year, they'll eventually start to learn um, a digital print technology. Um, so we use a Konica Minolta C1100 for digital color printing. And then we also have a large format printer, excuse me, in the sophomore shop that allows them to do posters and banners and uh, all kinds of cool graphics on that. Uh, in the senior year, um, <clears throat> this kind of goes hand in hand now with the theory shop because in theory, uh, what we do is we focus um, both junior and senior classes on a little more design work. So they're getting more skills and more time in design because they'll design products like t-shirts and notepads and posters at a much higher level. And then they go to the shop on their shop week and they'll actually do the manufacturing, whether it's embroidery, um, silkscreen t-shirts um, or offset printing. And they'll do also some digital printing over there as well. Uh, and, you know, we also focus on, in those two grade levels, we focus on some uh, projects, uh, art projects. We do the cool science as well. Uh, we also do a one called Safe Spaces, which is for the Mass, uh, Massachusetts Health and Sciences Department. Uh, we've done some contests with AAA. Uh, every other year they do a AAA contest where the kids design a poster. And then the two that we really focus on are there's, uh, the Printing Industries of New England offers an art show for um, graphic art students and college students that we submit all their work uh, in different categories, could be silk screen embroidery, um, large format, types of finishing, bindery, uh, that the kids will do that contest. And <clears throat> that's sent down to Boston and it's judged and then they win awards for a second, third place awards for that. And then we also do a, a national one called GAA, GAERF contest, which is a uh, nationally recognized uh, print production um, company, not company, it's an association, and they run different contests every year. Last year they did mailing, the year before they did packaging, and the year before that they did clothing. So I don't know what's coming out this year, but it's, it's going to be something similar to that. Um, for careers, uh, a lot of the stuff that we have uh, focuses on the uh, print industry. So we have kids that have gone over to uh, Heroes and Lowell um, to learn silkscreen embroidery, uh, DS Graphics and Lowell for commercial print and mailing. Um, we also send kids up to a case printing up in um, Hudson, New Hampshire for, again, uh, digital and offset printing. And then we just 
picked up a new company this year. It's called Fibermark. And Fibermark does uh, custom specialty packaging and uh, foil stamping. And they're in Salem, New Hampshire. Um, and we finally were able to partner with them this year um, <clears throat> to, uh, as a new co-op partner. Uh, and also one other thing too, the senior year uh, in the theory class, uh, the kids are doing, uh, this year we're doing some Konica online training, which is a nationally recognized program through Konica Minolta, them being one of our partners. Um, the kids have 11 courses they, they can take and get uh, nationally certified in 11 different areas of the Konica Minolta um, printing processes. So if they ever want to go to work for Konica, they have to take these classes and pass. So they, Konica offered these classes to us for free uh, to see if uh, some of our students could pass. And on average, I have, there's 11 classes. On average, I have students will pass eight or nine of them over the course of their senior year. Mr. Dion, before we, we let you go, can you talk to us a little bit about these pictures that we're looking at here on their screen? Yep, um, both those pictures are of our offset printing. Uh, we're using uh, Heidelberg uh, presses it. Uh, now at the school, we have a one color and a two color Heidelberg press. They use them to do um, the hall passes for the school and then a variety of forms and different things. Uh, because we are the print shop, we do all the printing for the school and we also uh, have some outreach programs where we'll do stuff for uh, other community nonprofit type companies uh, in, the, uh, in our districts. Mm -hmm. so. Another yep. service we provide at Great Lowell. Thank you, Mr. Don. We, we appreciate it. Anytime. Um, shifting over to our, our health department, uh, we're going to move to health, our department first, and then medical. Uh, we have from the health department, Ms. Bronco and Ms. Shaw. So, um, Ms. Bronco and Ms. Shaw, are you available? Yes. We yeah, we are. All right, great. So, who's going to tell us first the difference between health and medical? <laughs> um. Do you want me to tell you, Deb? I can sure. talk. Sure. So the difference between health and medical, they're both healthcare um, careers. Um, health tends to work on inpatient um, facilities, so such as like nursing homes um, and provide personal care and in hospitals too as well, where medical works mostly in doctor's offices um, and works on patients that actually leave for the day. So, um, and we're a pre-nursing program, which is the beginning of the career ladder, which leads into nursing. And we expose students to things like occupational therapy, physical therapy, um, some of the healthcare careers um, that are offered um, in the healthcare field. Great, so tell us a little bit more about uh, the credentials and the curriculum that health offers. Why, why would we wanna pursue a career in health and what do we have to offer? Okay, I will talk about the curriculum. Um, I'll start with the freshman um, program. The freshman program is um, basically, we expose the freshmen to all kinds of different health careers, if you will, um, with a heavy emphasis on the programs that they can get certified in, in our particular area. So we, you know, naturally have a heavy emphasis on nursing assistant, home health aid, LPN, RN. Okay, so that would be in the freshman year. And then after um, that, when they get to be sophomores, the sophomore curriculum um, is basically all the foundation skills that would be needed in any health career. And it includes things like anatomy and physiology, um, communication, medical terminology. Um, we do the OSHA training um, and um, communication skills, healthcare systems, healthcare settings. So that's sophomore year. And then junior year is when we do the certified nurse assistant program. And that's based on the Mass Department of Public Health regulations. And um, that is both a classroom course, a laboratory course, and a clinical course. So we take students to the clinical area and they provide supervised um, patient resident care to long-term care residents. So that's junior year. At the um, end of the program, junior year, the state comes in and gives them the Massachusetts Nurse Aid exam. And it's a two-part exam. It's both clinical and 
uh, written. So students will be one-on-one -on -one with the examiner in performing skills um, in order to get their certification. And then after that, they are able to go out on co-op if they choose um, mid-junior year. And then senior year, the focus is on um, pharmacy technician and on home health aid. We do have a partnership with CVS that allows our students at a younger age than normal to work as pharmacy technicians. We've been involved with them for several years now. So several of our students um, choose that route. Um, and the other, probably the other half of the students that go out on co-op choose the nursing assistant um, position. Ms. Shaw, did I hear you? I heard you talk about co-op. Did I hear you talk about the clinical experience or Ms. Yes. Bronco? Yep, yep, yep. Right. We do that with the junior students. We take them to the clinical area and they take patient, they take a patient assignment, a resident assignment. We supervise them. Um, and then at the end of the program, the state comes in, gives the, um, the state tests, both clinical and written, and then they are able to get a job and work via our co-op program. And, and what are some of the facilities that we would work, work in clinical at? Um, Long-term care facilities. Right now we use two, we use Duville and we use um, Wingate of Belvedere, which is now Bear Mountain, it changed its name. Um, so, those are the two right now that we use. As far as co-op, we use many in, in the Merrimack Valley. Great. And you could just share with us um, career pathways for people who may want to go to college and pursue the field and maybe those who may not want to go to college. Yes. You want to? Okay. You so, um, so students can take many career pathways. So we currently offer after high school, we currently offer an LPN program, which is great. It's a 10 month program. It's right at the school that they can head to after um, where there's a test exam they have to take prior to getting in. Um, so some students choose to take that career path where they become an LPN after high school. Um, some students choose to attend um, a two year college such as Middlesex. Um, some students choose to, to attend a four year school such as Revere or um, Plymouth State or University of Lowell. Um, and then other students choose to work as CNAs in their field. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I have to apologize. I think our health slide was, was compromised. So we had you on the medical slide. So no offense, I hope. Okay. We do have a new beautiful lab, right? Maybe mm -hmm. you could talk about the new lab and maybe you could talk about the credentials and certifications one more time. Cause I know, I think there's a lot of people out here who are in interested in health cause it is quite a popular shop. So a new lab, uh, give us the 60 second view of the new lab and the credentials that you acquire in health. So we have a beautiful, we, um, we got a $380,000 grant that we received and um, we had our lab updated with all new equipment, all new um, beds, all new, um, our units are on the wall. Um, we're receiving a new, brand new Hoyer lift. Um, so we have all the state of the art equipment for our students to utilize that will simulate exactly what's in the clinical area uh, for our students. Um, and uh, so with this being said, we have them uh, practice in the lab prior to, prior to going out with our patients so that they're safely um, taking care of live patients when they go out. Great, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Shaw and Ms. Bronco. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, we're going to shift over to medical now with Miss uh, Mally Roy. Uh, all right. Hi, Mally Roy. I'm, so I'm trying to get. Sorry, I'm trying to get my video on here, and I can't seem to do it. Oh, I think I might be able to help you with that. Thank oh, you. You should. Why don't you try right now, and you should be able to do that. <laughs> uh, you know. Well, I'm it, sorry. <laughs> we can always, you know, benefit from hearing your voice. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much, um, Mr. Barton and Ms. Davis. So uh, <laughs> I'd like to tell you about medical assisting, and I'm going to follow up on what um, both Ms. Branco and Ms. Shaw said. Um, 
because I consider us like a sister shop to health. We do have a lot of things in common. Um, and there are just a few things that are slightly different. The, and I completely agree that what we do is mostly outpatient. So we're the ones who, um, when you go to the doctor's office, we're the ones who call you back into the office. We do your vital signs. We give you your flu shot. We draw your blood. Um, but we also do other things. We can assist with surgery. We can assist with uh, labor and delivery. Um, there's a, a lot of things that we can do. Um, so the first thing I want to tell you about is our curriculum. Um, in the freshman year, after um, after co-op, I'm sorry, after the uh, exploratory, I'm trying to start my video still. It's still not working. I apologize. It's okay. Don't, don't worry. Okay. You're, doing, you're, you're doing wonderful. Okay, thank you. Um, so for our, our curriculum freshman year after exploratory, just the last part of freshman year, we go over just basic hand hygiene and we get our OSHA, OSHA certification, just like every other shop does. Um, for our sophomore year, we do all kinds of things. There's PPE, which now everybody talks about. So that's personal protective equipment. We're talking about gloves, masks, face shields, all kinds of things and teach you when you need to use them and how to use them. Um, the, we do basic anatomy and we do all of medical terminology, which is basically the language that the students will use for the rest, not just the rest of their high school career, but if they stay in medical or in, in a medical field, they're going to use medical terminology as the language that everybody uses. Um, also in sophomore year, we do vital signs. We do all kinds of administrative procedures. So that's office procedures. We teach you how to answer the phone, um, how to use the computer, how to do electronic medical billing or electronic medical records and coding and billing. And all of that is included in the sophomore year. Um, for junior year, that's probably the hardest year, the one that has the most uh, curriculum in it. And we are an academic shop, we're hard. Uh, we do give you a lot of work, but we like to say that not only do we work hard, but we play hard. So in the junior year, you learn laboratory tests, including using microscopes and looking at really neat things um, on the microscope. We teach you finger stick procedures, which are the pictures that are on right now on the screen. Um, we teach you uh, medication administration and how to give injections. We do phlebotomy, which is drawing blood. And in the junior year, you just draw from fake arms using fake blood. But by the time you get to be senior, if you've passed the phlebotomy test, you get to draw from one of the teachers. Um, we teach you nutrition. And then also in the theory part of the junior year, it's all pharmacology. Uh, CVS has just invested a, a lot of money into our school and they've created a, a, an entire mock pharmacy where we have it looks exactly like a CVS, the pharmacy part of a CVS. And so students get to learn how to, they learn the top 200 most prescribed drugs. They learn what each drug category is and what it does for the body, um, what things are interactions and what could go wrong. They learn how to physically write out the label and, and fill all of the bottles themselves. You know what, I'm doing pantomimes and I realize you guys can't even see me. Um, and uh, it enables them to go out and- What you're doing. I'm sorry, pardon? We can imagine you. Most of the <laughs> I do talk with my hands a lot. Um, the, uh, we, we do have this partnership with CVS. So we have more jobs than we have students to fill them. And as soon as they're done with that pharmacology, they can go off and they can go work for not just CVS, but any pharmacy and work as a pharmacy assistant. Um, finally, in the senior shop, it's mostly co-op. I'm gonna talk more about co-op in just a minute, um, but those who are not on co-op also go into more depth of everything that we've learned in the previous three years. Um, there's performing and interpreting EKGs. Um, and again, if you wanna try drawing blood from a teacher, you can do that. All of the years uh, work on communication, employee, employability skills, um, HIPAA, which is all about privacy. Um, we do medical math and medical terminology in all four of those years. Uh, the certification, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Okay. No, this, no, no. Keep going for certifications and the co-op and career experience. Yes, sir. Thank you. So um, in the certifications that we get, all the students get OSHA, the safety certifications, we all get CPR. And then they're eligible to sit for three different national certifications. One is for EKG, and it's how to 
read and interpret those. The second one is CCMA, which is certified, certified clinical medical assistant. And that's like the overall thing of what we're doing. And then the final one is for a pharmacy technician. And that's a national test for the PTCB, the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board. Um, as far as co-op, uh, we are usually in the top three shops that have the most students out on co-op at any given time. And just like you know, we were talking before, you can work in the hospital, you can work in a doctor's office, a pharmacy, an insurance company. There's lots of places that you could work. And that kind of goes to what I was saying about, excuse me, about careers. Um, you know, we there's so many things that we can do. We can be in urgent care centers. We can be in emergency clinics. We can um, work in just about every department in the hospital, not all of them, but most of them. Um, but most of our students end up going on to either four-year school or uh, to the military. So in that case, you can work as a medical assistant while you're in school and it helps you go through school. Great. Well, it sounds like there's a, well, we can tell, we know there's a lot of opportunities there. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Malloy. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, shifting over to programming and web, we have Mr. King and Mr. Voges. Mr. King and Mr. Voges, could you tell us uh, a little bit about programming and web and the curriculum and credentials? Sure. I know there's a lot of credentials in programming and web. Yes, we do have quite a few credentials. Um, so I'm Mr. King. I'm the junior uh, level shop teacher in programming and web development. So in programming web development, there's three basic areas that we focus on. First is um, programming. So that's writing applications for desktop computers, for laptop computers. The second area is web development. So that's developing your websites and web applications. And the, the third area that we focus on, and students study this other class week during the related class, is information technology. So students learn sophomore year, the, the um, fundamentals of information technology, um, junior year, they focus on um, A+, plus, which is computer repair, um, and learning all about computers. And um, senior year, it's network plus in security fundamentals. So they're learning how computers work together, how they communicate, and then how to secure those communications. And uh, cybersecurity, as everyone's heard in the news lately, is a, is a huge coming field. So that's kind of the, the general... Um, areas that we uh, focus on in programming web development. To dig a little more into the curriculum, um, sophomore year students start right out with an AP computer science principles class. So if you don't know what an AP class is, um, in May after the students are finished their curriculum in the class, they take a test um, and this test is scored um, between a one and five. And if the student scores at least a three on that test, um, they get college credit for a, a intro to computer science class at, at most major colleges. And we had very, very good success with um, the vast majority of our students scoring three or above. So most of our students sophomore year already have um, three college credits at most major colleges. Um, the second part of sophomore year, um, students learn the fundamentals of web development, so HTML and CSS, um, the basis is how to build a website. Um, jumping to junior year, um, we focus on three basic programming languages, Visual Basic, C Sharp, and Python. So students get exposed to uh, a few different programming languages, the differences, and start building real world applications with them. Then we jump into um, career preparation and students build a, a digital portfolio. So they, they kind of take some of the certifications that they've earned and they build a website to kind of highlight everything they've, they've learned over the past two years. And, and we focus on um, career, so getting students ready for co-op. Um, senior years, um, students take another AP class. So this is AP Computer Science A, which is a Java course. Um, so this isn't a mandatory course. It's a course that students can choose to take or not take. It's a very intensive course. Um, Mr. Voges can talk a little bit about that um, if he wants. And Mr. Voges also senior year um, teaches a, an IOT course. And what IOT is, is Internet of Things. Um, 
And that's this concept that we've come up with recently where we're taking dumb appliances like a, a light bulb and we're connecting them with the internet. So now all of a sudden we can connect this light bulb to the internet and have it turn on when you come into the room. Um, you can do that with refrigerators. So the refrigerator knows when you've taken something off the shelf and can automatically reorder your milk for you. So Mr. Voges will start to dig into the internet of things senior year um, as well. Great. Now, as far as um, certifications, all our students get um, the, we have a lot of certifications as Mr. Barton said. Um, all our students get the OSHA 10 certification. Sophomore year, they get um, what's called the CIW Site Development Associate. So that's a, a basic certification um, for web development and websites. Um, CompTIA certifications are kind of the basic IT certifications. Sophomore year, students focus on IT fundamentals. Um, junior year, it's A plus PC Pro. So that's a, a basic certification that you need to get a tech support job. So students focus on that junior year and then senior year, um, students focus on network plus and security plus. And those are the um, higher level certifications that you would get if you wanna go work at a company in server administration and network administration. We also have um, probably a dozen or so Microsoft Technology Associate certifications um, that students can study for software development fundamentals, networking fundamentals, database fundamentals. Um, and most recently, we've been looking at um, moving into some Amazon Web Services certifications. Those are, those are kind of new. It's, a, it's an upcoming thing. So moving all our, our applications and our programming to the web and on Amazon services. Um, as far as co-op goes, um, one of our major co-op providers for programming is IBM. So IBM in a, in a normal year will hire between six and 12 of our students. Um, everyone may have heard of the Watson supercomputer. This is a supercomputer that um, beat the best Jeopardy players a few years ago. Um, I have students that have worked on that project at IBM. They weren't actually programming the artificial intelligence, but they had a role working on the project, which is a pretty cool thing to put on your resume um, if you're just a high school student. Um, BAE Systems also hires uh, our students as, as well as a, a company, a local company in Chelmsford called KGB IT Services. So the vast majority of students graduating from programming and web development do go on to college. Um, but if students do choose not to go on to college, there are, are many entry level tech support careers, um, entry level programmer, entry level um, server administration that, that students can go with, with those certifications if they earn those certifications. Um, lots of IT, cert, uh, IT level um, careers that students can go into. Um, but most of our students do go on to college. Um, a lot will go to UMass Lowell, um, Fitchburg State College. This year we had a student that got a full four year of paid scholarships to Wellesley College. And we're very, very proud of that. And we had a student um, a few years ago that um, got a, a full boat to the Coast Guard Academy as well. So that's um, pretty proud of our students when they, they go off to these big colleges. Well, thank you, Mr. King. We, we appreciate a lot of interesting things happening in the programming and web department. Thank you. Um, I just want to take this time to introduce Ms. Andy Malley Roy. We can see her now, so she can wave. <laughs> um, and before we um, shift over to admissions, I think we have Ms. Sarmento on the line who's going to tell us a little bit about a unique course that all fresh, nearly all freshmen take, digital literacy, and digital citizenship and literacy. Ms. Sarmento. Well, thank you. I'm sorry about that delay. I was unmuting myself. Welcome, Problem. everyone. Um, uh, and well said to my um, to my team, my technology team. Thank you so much. Um, and the digital literacy uh, citizenship course is a course that we've developed. Um, and it, what it does is it takes the freshman student through uh, four different uh, mini courses. And it prepares the students to use technology in a responsible and a proficient uh, manner, both in school 
in the workplace and in everyday life. Uh, the course teaches the students how to uh, work in an internet rich environment. It will teach the students how to be responsible digital citizens. citizens. And the course, as, as I said, is divided into four main components, how to be a responsible digital citizen, career planning, employability skills, and financial literacy is a course, uh, research and writing another course, and the final course is civics. Uh, they explore the concepts from each module of this course, uh, such as relationships, uh, communication, media balance, uh, well-being, privacy, security, uh, fundamentals of conducting research, uh, career and financial planning, and uh, the digital uh, civic activities. Um, the essential question uh, that the students will explore is how will they best use that digital information, which we are bombarded with? Um, how do they use that safely and ethically? And, and what are the rights, the responsibilities of being a, a good digital uh, citizen? All right, thank you. Uh, it's a great class, I think, and it's, uh, it's uh, contemporary and uh, very much uh, uh, a, a course of study for uh, contemporary students. Well, thank you. There's a lot to cover and a lot to learn in that class. Um, so be, I'm going to open up the chat so people can chat questions. So uh, we'll have the opportunity to answer them. So feel free to start asking questions via chat. Um, so the next steps in, for tonight, Ms. Martinez is just going to go over admissions for a few minutes. We'll be able to take some questions. And then the final thing this evening is we're going to launch a poll so that we can get some information about our families and friends. Oh, and before, um, well, actually, I'm going to have Ms. Martinez. I'm going to have Ms. Martinez speak, and then we're going to move over to something um, about Mr. No, I actually, Ms. Martinez first. Okay. Good. Good evening, everyone, and. Um, my name is Ms. Martinez, I'm the Director of Admissions. And what you're looking at on your screen is actually our homepage at uh, www.gltech.org. And uh, you'll notice on the menu there's an admissions tab. And if you put your mouse over the admissions tab, there's, there's really about um, 10 items on, on the menu. So uh, the first link um, is admissions, and that uh, will give you a button um, to apply online for our online student application as well as be able to view our uh, school recruitment uh, video that will give you um, an overview of our school. It's about an 11 minute video overview of our school as well as testimonials from staff and students of um, why they uh, think uh, that it was the right choice for them to attend Grade Low Technical High School. Also looking at the uh, Grade Low Information Sheet um, that's uh, listed there in uh, our most recent information sheet in English, uh, Khmer, Portuguese, and Spanish. Uh, we also have frequently asked questions about it and the, and about admissions, and that will be on the FAQs, as well as uh, the application for admissions. And again, this is uh, the link for applications that are in multiple languages. Again, uh, the languages would be in uh, Khmer, Portuguese, and Spanish. Uh, the online application for admission is where you want to go if you would like to apply, um, if you would like to apply um, after seeing all these wonderful uh, technical programs, you can apply immediately online on this online application uh, for admission. Um, all, uh, all applicants, um, if you need any assistance with the application, you can give us a call in the admissions office. We're more than happy to help you apply online. Um, you will receive, once you apply, you know that your application is complete, you'll receive a six-digit uh, six uh, confirmation number, and we ask that you keep this number as a reference for all future communication with us. Um, the next, um, the next uh, piece is uh, you will be able to see our virtual tours for this year. We have eight virtual tours, 
and, and you can, can click, click on uh, our information video as well as for each of our 23 technical program videos. Many of you have already seen these if you if you are students in our sending school in our sending communities. Um, <coughs> you should re uh, receive these from your sending schools uh, through your guidance department to, to be able to view the, these videos. Um, and then the, the last two, um, because there were many questions about this, are our admission scoring as well as our admissions plan. Uh, the admission scoring link is the rubric uh, from our state approved admissions plan. And then uh, we also have our admissions plan um, that, uh, that basically has English, uh, Khmer, Portuguese, and Spanish. And you'll see how points are awarded based on academic achievement, attendance, discipline, and conduct and local school guidance council recommendation. And that will be in the admission score. And for, for the deadline to be considered for first round applications is February 1st um, of, this, of this year. Um, so please make sure if you want to be considered and you want to attend grade level for the upcoming school year that you apply by February 1st. And uh, please apply as soon as possible if you're interested in attending our school. Okay. Great, thank you, Ms. Martinez. Um, I'm just going to, um, before we begin, I want to introduce Mr. Ricardo Colunga, who um, is our is our um, family parent liaison for Portuguese and Spanish speaking students and families. He's just going to provide a brief introduction, so that if you do have any questions in Spanish or Portuguese, you can chat them, and we will save them, and Mr. Colunga will reach out to you. So, is Mr. Colunga available? Yes, I am. Hello, how is everybody doing? Happy New Year. Um, I'm Ricardo Colunga. As Mr. Barton pointed out, I'm a parent liaison family, I'm sorry, student uh, slash family uh, parent liaison at Gray Lowell Technical High School. And uh, what I do is I, um, I'm in contact with those uh, uh, oh. households in which um, English is not the first language, it can be Portuguese or it can be in Spanish. Um, I'm gonna, uh, in, in the chat, I'm gonna uh, uh, share my email address and the number is my, in my, in my phone number. So please feel free to reach out with, uh, whenever you have a, a question in one of those languages. We also have uh, Mrs. Cortez, she speaks Kamai um, and she can do the same in that in that language. Again, thank you very much for the opportunity of being here. You feel free to take the opportunity to, to say what you just said in Spanish and Portuguese for our- Absolutely. I'm going to start right. in Spanish. Um, mi nombre es Ricardo Colunga. I trabajo en Grey Lowell Technical High School. Eh, estoy en contacto con las familias eh, que hablan español en casa. Eh, si ustedes tienen alguna duda, voy a, en el chat voy a colocar mi dirección de email y mi teléfono para que me hagan favor de, de consultarme con cualquier pregunta. Eh, ahora en portugués, Ricardo Colunga, yo falo portugués. Si ustedes tienen dudas, preguntas, eh, eh, por favor, ligue para mí. Voy a compartir un uh, número de teléfono y el enderezo de email. Eh, muy obrigado y feliz año nuevo. Ok, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent. All right, so now it's time for a few questions. So we're going to do questions, and then we're going to uh, have a poll, and then Superintendent, Superintendent Davis wants to uh, say goodbye to all of you. So um, if we can start with, I believe DVC is doing a pretty good job of answering questions on the chat. So I'm going to start with, is it possible to take two shops? Um, actually, we focus on one shop. So you'll have the opportunity during your freshman year to try uh, 14 different shops and then um, be placed in a shop based on our exploratory rubric. So one shop is really where, um, where you'll be focusing for your uh, 10th, 11th and 12th grade years. Um, there was a question about programming web. So I'm gonna turn this over to Mr. King. Um, do we do Python programming for artificial intelligence? I think Mr. King, you're unmuted now. Yeah, I was just trying to unmute myself. Perfect. Um, yes, we do. Um, students will be exposed to uh, Python programming. We don't get that deeply into artificial intelligence. When you're programming with artificial intelligence, um, these days, what you're usually doing is 
is connecting to something like Amazon Web Services and using their built-in AI functions. Um, but students will be exposed to Python junior year um, at Grade Along program. Great, thank you. Um, there was a question about junior ROTC. Um, we are in the, we were actually in the process prior to the pandemic of offering junior ROTC via uh, the Air Force, Air Force Junior ROTC. Uh, unfortunately, that was put on hold uh, and we will be continuing the process of searching or selecting an instructor to uh, proceed with the junior ROTC Air Force program, um, hopefully into the next year. Um, there was a question about uh, the pool. Yes, we do have a pool here. Uh, we have a swim and dive team, as well as the pool is part of the physical education curriculum. So if you join us on Thursday evening, you can learn more about the pool and what we, you know, what happens in the pool area and swimming and diving with physical education and, and uh, sports and athletics. Um, there was a question in here about, will there be an in-person open house this year? Um, unfortunately, this is our open house for our eighth grade virtual, virtual open house for our three days. Um, who knows if, if the public health data allows it, maybe we, we could have an accepted students night as we proceed along. Um, I think it's up to the, the public health data and where we, where we head with that. Um, I believe, I think I answered all of the questions. I just want to make sure I did. Is there an, okay, I'm going to shift over to Mrs. Martinez to talk about attendance and absences in the application process. Go ahead. Okay, uh, as I as I mentioned um, a little bit earlier, if you if you uh, we have our our actual rubric up online, or you could give us a call at the admissions office. But there's not an absence limit um, per se. But uh, what there is is a rubric for, for the points that you uh, told that you get for uh, each absence. So that will affect uh, your overall point total. So uh, before we, we depart, because I think we've answered all of the questions, um, I would like to first shift to the gallery view so that uh, all of the members of the technology cluster can wave to our audience and you can see, see their faces. So if um, Ian Harrison, who's been helping us behind the scenes could do that, that would be terrific. So if everyone could wave and say hello, uh, that's our technology cluster. And we thank you all for, for being here. Um, oh, there's one more question. Oh, I see it in my chat. Let me grab it. Um, are there programs that would be preferable for learning animation uh, for cartoons and anime and such? I'm going to shift that over to Mr. Lord. I'm going to guess it's design and visual, and I think Miss Dixon answered it. Um, definitely design and visual, I think, is where you'd want to go for photography, for videography, and more of the fine arts. So that would be the shop that you would head to. Uh, there is one more question about recommendation. Is there a recommendation I have to fill out, or do I have to write a paper? Well, basically, it's the online application process. Yeah, I think Ms. Martinez will just, I think if you go on our website, um, you'll be able to see the whole application process there, but I'll shift it over to Ms. Martinez. Sure, uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, basically, how do you apply and what are some of the basic requirements? Sure, you would, you would apply online. Uh, I think it was, a, the, the question was about the, um, let me make this a little bit louder. I think the question was about uh, the the recommendation. We request the recommendation from your sending school, so they sent that to us over with all of the other information that we request to process your your application. So you don't have to do anything. We do that for you. Great, thank, thank you. you. Um, as you can see, I just launched the poll. So if you could spend some time taking that poll before we part that. Uh, uh, very helpful to us to get a sense of uh, your interests and where you're all from. There was one question about uh, students with grade level able to participate in events at Lowell High School. Um, no, so essentially, um, Ms. Davis just, Superintendent Davis just asked me about our relationship with Lowell High or Lowell High Schools. 
So Grinnell Old Tech is its own school district. So we are our own school district. We have a separate administration, a separate school committee. Um, and um, we do do connect, connections with many of our students, if not uh, high as 88% come from the city of Lowell, but it's um, really a separate school district. So, so if you were going to come to Griddle Little Tech, you would be participating in Griddle Little Tech sports and activities and following our curriculum. Um, so while you're taking the poll, I think I see a few more questions. Is extra information required for students applying who are currently homeschooled? I'm going to ask Ms. Martinez to jump in. Yes, uh, so currently there is a, another requirement. Again, you can give us a call at the admissions office um, or you can go online in our admissions plan and it outlines the homeschool requirements. Great. Um, my, there's a question here. In order, if you one wanted to be a pediatrician, what program would be better, medical or health? I'm going to ask um, Andy Malley Roy to jump in and answer that. I think I know the answer, but I'm going to let let her do it. And, and certainly, Ms. Shaw or Ms. Bronco might want to weigh in. Okay. Um, so, if you want to be any kind of doctor, and keep in mind that being a pediatrician is a specialist beyond going to medical school, um, either one of our shops would help you. We, in both cases, we give you a, a good solid education for uh, anatomy, medical terminology, science, medical math, um, and and making connections and networks. Um, but you really don't even have to go to a medical shop to go to medical school. You could be in a traditional high school, you could be in carpentry, it could be anything, and you could go on to medical school. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, question about ice hockey. Uh, we're going to have sports on Thursday night, but I can answer it. Yes, we have a competitive ice hockey team. It's partnered up with Neshoba Tech and they practice out of Chelmsford. So uh, if you come here, you can certainly play hockey. Um, and it's a collaborative team with Neshoba Valley Technical High School. Um, there was another question. What time does school start and end? Very good question. School starts at Mr. Costa, seven. Well, I think I stumped him. 740. 7.40. And it ends at 2.01. I was going to say 2.03, but it's 7.40 and 2.01. So you got to be here on time to get started. Uh, who is the fo football coach? The football coach is Mr. Abrams. And that changes. It does change every, possibly could change every year, but um, currently Mr. Abrams is the football coach. who He'll be joining us on Thursday evening. So we have about five more minutes and I see a few more questions coming in. Do we have track? Yes, we do. In fact, we have Mr. Dion here, who's the track coach. Can He's waving to us. Um, Survey question. There is volleyball. There is volleyball. We have volleyball here. Um, you can see there may be a polling question, a, challenge, a question about what middle school are you from? It's forcing you to take that question. Do we have ultimate Frisbee? Um, we do not have ultimate Frisbee as an extracurricular, uh, but you never know. Um, wrestling, yes, we have wrestling. Um, is there country? Yes, we have transportation from all four communities. So. Uh, you do not have to pay for transportation. There's no fees. There's no user fees for transportation or um, athletics. Um, there is no rugby. No, there is no rugby. You never know, but I, I'm going to venture to guess we'll have ultimate Frisbee before rugby. Um, <laughs> um, no need to apologize for typos. That's perfectly, perfectly all set. Yeah, I think there might be a problem with the poll with you selecting your middle school. And I, I will, we, we own our behavior grid a little tech. And I think I can own that, that I think I need to fix a setting in there. Just keep answering the questions and we'll do, we'll do our best. Um, is there a shot? Yeah, Mr. Dion's answering the questions about shot put. Oh, here's a good question. Is there an application process the same for kids with IEPs? It's the same process for everyone. It's or Ms. Martinez wants to weigh in. Yes, yes. 
Sure, it's the same. We have a blind admissions process, so we do not consider IEPs or um, 504s during the admissions process. But once you are accepted, um, we, we um, then have a transition meeting, so we make sure that we're um, ready for you um, and, and, and for IEPs and 504s. And it's voluntary on the application. Um, that answers your question. No, there's definitely a, a bug issue with a poll, but um, you can select your middle schools. You, you can select the middle school you attended and maybe the one that you wanted to attend. And we'll, we'll, we'll fix that for our audience tomorrow. Yeah, you can select your middle schools, but we know there's a bug in it and we'll, we'll be able to fix it. But thank you for answering the, the poll questions. Um, I, think at the, I think we're heading to the end. Yes, there's cheerleading here. Oh, there's a question about siblings. So if a sibling attends Greater Lowell, do they automatically get accepted? Uh, they do not. It's the same admission, blind admissions policy for our process and application process for everyone. So um, yep, they have to meet all of the application requirements that Ms. Martinez outlined and it's, uh, there's no special consideration for siblings. Um, how many kids get accepted? Uh, it varies every year, but I'm going to say that it was close to 600 or so. Right, so it was about 595, 595 this year. Um, when are the applications due? February 1st. February 1st is their application process. Um, so I think with, we have one minute left, and I'm going to ask Ms. Davis. I'm going to unmute Superintendent Davis so she can, uh, she can say goodbye to us all. And I want to thank the transportation cluster. And I keep interrupting Ms. Davis, and she's going to. So, Superintendent hold the Davis was on mute tonight, something that <laughs> Superintendent Davis is not used to at all. <laughs> so, uh, finally, I'm off mute. Yeah. I just want to say thank you uh, to all the families who, who t t tuned in tonight to learn a little bit about our transportation and technology cluster. A special thanks to all the administrators and teachers who volunteered to participate tonight to share a little bit about their life and our programming here at Greater Lowell Technical High School. We hope uh, that we were able to answer your questions. If you have more questions, you can direct them to Mrs. Martinez in our admissions office and uh, I think that's the end of our presentation tonight. If you're interested in our construction cluster and our personal services cluster, please turn in, tune in tomorrow night at 6 a.m. We'll be starting with the construction cluster and then 7 p.m., sorry, not a.m., 6 p.m. and then 7 p.m. Uh, for the personal services cluster. Uh, so if you're interested, please feel free to tune in uh, tomorrow night, but we thank you. Uh, Family partnership uh, means a lot to us, and uh, we hope that uh, you want to become part of our school community. And, and thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. We're going to shut the uh, chat down, and we hope you'll join us, as Ms. Davis said, for tomorrow evening and the next evening, and you'll have a, more of an opportunity to answer questions. And we'll, um, we'll leave the poll open, so those of you who want to complete the poll can, can keep on doing and we'll that. We'll try to fix those glitches We'll, we'll, we'll fix that night. for tomorrow night. <laughs> But um, thank you again, and good night to everyone. Good night. Thank Bye -bye. you, guys. Thank you.